What's going on, y'all? This conscious one coming at you uh, back with another audio and a couple of video clips. I uh, hope y'all had a good weekend. I hope y'all stand away from all the hive minded robots this Monday afternoon and this Monday evening. I uh, just want to talk a little bit about this Kobe Bryant thing. It's kind of, of an old topic, but. You know, I just want to bring it back up. You know, when this whole thing went down, I was in Cambodia. And I remember when I got the news that Kobe had passed, you know, of course my heart was heavy for a few days, but then I said, "No." Nah. I said, "I don't I don't know about this one." I said, "I don't know about this one." I woke up around 2013. This is how I know that this existence is not going to last for long because a lot of people not a lot of people but most of the people who so called quote unquote woke seem like they woke up around 2012 2013 so maybe 2012 was some kind of uh, divine awakening you know it's not that the world ended it's just that you know the saved or the woke began you know um, but what woke me up, and of course we were all still asleep when the whole World Trade Center thing happened, but I say around 2013, I think a Sandy Hook, when a Sandy Hook thing happened, I believe that that was around that time. You had the Sandy Hook, I think Sandy Hurricane, Hurricane Sandy, and then you had the Sandy Hook thing, school shooting, which was, uh, uh, I believe they showed uh, this whole PSYOP in Batman. The Dark Knight Rises, I believe, and I'm doing this video on short notice, so I don't I don't have all the clips right now. But y'all pretty much who listen to my channel already know what I'm talking about. So, you know, I woke up around 2013. I'm like, okay, Hurricane Sandy. He had a Sandy Hook thing. He got Captain Hook, and Captain Hook was the enemy of the children. And then I saw some clips in the Dark Knight that seemed to reference this Saya. and then that's when I start asking questions like okay well, this ain't making sense so around that time I was about 33 years old uh, which 33 being a year that Jesus allegedly died or he woke up or he was resurrected or his uh, body his incorruptible body was uh, um, excuse me his corruptible body was made incorruptible uh, he became an enlightened being at the age of 33. And of course, we know that has to do with uh, the spine and the, and the vertebrae and the chakras, etc., etc. But fast forward to this Kobe incident, and here I am, you know, like eight years later, and I'm just, I guess you would say, fully woke. I hate using that word because that's a term, you know. They're, they're making a mockery out of woke people now. That's, you know, they're trying to make woke people seem crazy. We're crazy. You're conspiracy theorists, which is, you know, that term came from the government. Conspiracy theorists. No one even heard of what. There's no such thing as a conspiracy theorist. There's a such thing as people who don't ask questions and go along with whatever, and people who do ask questions. But, um,. Fast forward to this Kobe thing, and um, you know, I was looking at the whole Miles Garrett situation, and I said I still needed a smoking gun. And then I saw a comment from from an uh, individual that stated that uh, this person, Kobe Bryant, who was playing Miles Garrett, was wearing a Ghostbuster Ghostbusters shirt, and I said, "That's it. That's the smoking gun. That's Kobe Bryant. That's there's no way that's not Kobe Bryant." And I see him doing the whole Masonic thing with his hand on his chin. So I'm just going to leave a couple of clips of Kobe Bryant. And uh, for what I know, this is not Miles. This, this, these two characters, uh, these two clips I'm going to play. This, this is not Miles Garrett. This is Kobe Bryant playing Miles Garrett. We probably never seen. Well, Miles Garrett. I'm pretty sure he's done some interviews, but they were able to make Kobe look so much like Miles Garrett enough that they was able to do a whole another, you know, um, interview with him pretending he's Miles Garrett but these are obviously two different individuals okay so it's it's a real interesting take folks it just goes to show you we live in a scripted reality we live in a fake reality based off mythology and, and myths 
for the most part. And you do and, and you have those who stay scared and in living in fear who decide to be hive minded robots and stay asleep. And then you have those who want to move to a higher level, who've had enough of this 3D reality. Okay? So just check out the clips. And again, the smoking gun is the Ghostbuster shirt. I right? y'all take care out there. Peace. You haven't done any interviews over the last few months. What made you want to do one today? I mean, it's good timing. Uh, now I can finally, you know, I'm back in the league, so I feel like it's it's yeah. a good time for me to, to share not only what I've been doing, but you know what I'm doing to take a step forward and leave all that behind me. Were you surprised when you were reinstated? Uh, yes and no. I was hoping for it, so uh, I kind of tried thinking and speaking into existence, but you, know, you never know at the end of the day, and you know, whatever the decision is, gotta gotta roll with the punches. Let's go back to November 14th. Walk me through what happened. Uh, I mean, coming off the edge, there's probably like 10, but there's less than 15 seconds up, I remember that. And uh, I didn't want to be on the field, but you know, since I was already out there, I was, and uh, they were still throwing the ball, Decided I was going to go make a play, so he still had the ball. He's, you know, he's winding back to throw. I'm going, you know, to hit him in the strike zone. No, I'm not trying to do anything illegal. I should go to take him down. He says some words as we're going down. What did he say to you? I mean, he called me the N word. He called me a stupid N word. Uh, I don't like. I don't say the N word. Whether it's you know with A E R to me personally, it just shouldn't be said. And whether it's known by family, friends, anyone. And I, I don't want to use it because I don't want to, you know, find that appropriate around me for anyone to use. So you know, when he said it, you know, it kind of sparked something, but I still tried to let it go and still walk away. And once he came back, it kind of, you know, kind of reignited the situation. I think a lot of people, yeah. when they heard this allegation, mm -hmm. their reaction was, well, why didn't he say that immediately? I didn't, oh, because I would have been reaching for justification at the time. Well, he said this, and this is what happened. I wanted to just take it to the NFL. This is what happened, and you no, know, this is all of what happened, as well as the, the physical altercation part of it. The league said they didn't find evidence of a racial slur. What was your reaction to that? Most quarterbacks wear mics in their helmets. He somehow uh, lost his helmet and had to get another one without a mic. There were guys who were mic'd up near me, and near us during that time who didn't hear anything. And from what I've heard, there have been audio during that game that could have heard something or could not have heard something, but you know, they don't want to say. So. Something was said. I know something was said. Now, whether the NFL wants to acknowledge it, that's up to them. But uh, I don't want to make it a, a racial thing, honestly. It's over with for me, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's over with for, for Mason. So we just want to move past that and keep on playing football. You told Roger Goodell you, you would like to talk to the Steelers. Mm -hmm. I, you, you said you'd take that opportunity. What would you say to Mason Rudolph? What I say? I mean, I apologize. There's no need for that kind of violence. You know, that was outside of the game of football. And uh, it was idiotic, foolish. You know, it, it was childish on both parts, but it was childish of, of me. And uh, I apologize for you know, attempting to, to injure him because you know, I would never, in my right mind, ever try to do something like that. And uh, hope he's well. I think part of the reason there was so much public uproar and backlash. It wasn't what actually happened, but what could have happened. Yeah. Is that something that you think about as well? Yeah, I mean, it could have been a lot worse, you know. The helmet was turned a different way. If I, if I hit him in any different spot, you know, things could have been a lot worse, but I also think, you know, looking at that, it wasn't. It was, you, know, you, you can think about you know, the, the hypothetical situation of you know what could have happened
How did you feel when you heard people saying he should be arrested or put in jail? He should be arrested. You know, I wish you know, somebody would hit his kids upside the head with a helmet. I don't even have kids. It was like, sheesh. You know, like, why would you wish down anybody? I mean, there, was, there were so many things that you know, people wished upon me for, for one mistake that you know, plenty of people make mistakes in their lives but you know, never get called out for it. But mine was you know, public in front of millions of people. And mm -hmm. so... It'll, it gives people the the idea or the the confidence to, to speak out and say whatever they like over social media. You got an indefinite suspension, which ended up being six games. Uh, in the past, similar incidents have resulted in shorter punishments. How did you feel about that? Oh, I don't, that's hard to answer without getting in trouble because I know that a lot of people were talking about the suspensions that you get from marijuana use or from domestic violence, you know, the, all these, you know, specific cases, oh my, I can't speak on them. You know, that's, and that wasn't my, not my topic to, to talk on. So I know that, you know, what I did was wrong and what I, I got what I deserved and you know, whatever it was. And, uh, you know, maybe there should be a little bit more, uh, clarity on what you get for, for what you do. And uh, I think domestic, domestic violence is, should be a little bit higher than uh, what you do on the football field, because at the end of the day, it's a, it's a violent game, even though and what I did was a little bit past that. But you know, there are some things that have, have been uh, looked, looked away from or shied away from, at least with the NFL, on, on what they, what they you know, give as a punishment for. So that's just my opinion. When you stand back now and just kind of look at all of this in totality, the incident, the aftermath, the punishment, now the reinstatement, what do you feel like is the number one thing you've learned from all of this? I'll just you know, walk, away, walk away from the situation, just you know, allowing yourself to, to take a second during the situation. You know, allowing yourself to give, give yourself a moment for a response instead of a reaction. Everyone, thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports, more analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you there. What's good, bro? How you doing? How, how are you, man? Doing? Hey, how does it feel to be back, bro? It feels pretty nice. Did you speak to Mason at all about it before you got reinstated? I speak to Mason. <laughs> Not at all. Um, can I just ask, what did you learn from everything that happened? What did I learn? Oh, well, when I release something, you'll see. Or when I get back on the field, you'll see. Right, 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 right. That's nice, man. Dude. Man, I saw your Instagrams in the gym, bro. You were jacked as hell. That's crazy. Got some time off, so I think it'll look better. <laughs> Do you think, you know, the time off, because you spent so much time at the gym, it'll ultimately be, you know, silver lining maybe, or a, a blessing in disguise? I believe everything that happens to you is for a reason. Yeah. You, know, you take the take the lesson and make the best out of it, everything's a blessing in disguise. Oh, that's dope, bro. Just one last thing. Because you're so jacked, do you think you could, could hold your own in like a world's strongest man type competition? No. Yeah, come on, bro. Functional strength over over everything. I got to be fast and also be strong. So. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Hey, man. Nice to see you, bro. Congratulations on coming back. Thanks. Love you, bro. Thank you.